Hey guys, what's up and welcome back or to The Roomies Digest. My name is Christine, I'm one half of The Roomies. And today, if you clicked on this video, you know that we are going to be doing my bullet journal quarterly flip through and also a plan with me for April. Now, obviously it is no surprise that the next theme is going to be Bridgerton themed. I am so excited to show you guys what I came up with for this theme because it is so exciting. I finished the new season season and it's a fun time. But before we get into the good stuff, let me just go ahead and preface this video by saying there will be a couple of Bridgerton quotes, um, some scenes and kind of like things from the new season. So if you haven't watched it and you want no spoilers, then by the time we get to that part of the bullet journal like video, just make sure that you either uh, click off and save the video for later when you're ready to watch it or you might get spoiled you might get spoiled. I feel your pain, like I do not like to be spoiled for things. So I just wanna preface that and let you guys know. There are also time cards down below. So if you want to skip over the like spoilery portions, you can, but I do wanna just say that there's nothing super spoilery. Like I don't reveal major plot points in this bullet journal. But if you for sure don't wanna be spoiled, which I totally understand and support you, then please, use those time cards down below. So if you are new to this type of bullet journal video that I'm doing currently on our channel, I basically am just going to do a flip through of the past three months. It's gonna be a quick little flippy flip, explain kind of how I use my journal and you know what we're gonna be doing moving forward. And then I'll show you guys my new spread for April. I think that's everything that I wanna say. Hopefully that was easy to understand. And yeah, let's go ahead and get into the flip through. Bum, bum, da 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 da, bum, bum, da. Okay, so flipping right to the year at a glance, you guys can see that I definitely already started filling this out more than the last video. I've had some time to fill in my trackers for social media and my reading goals. You will notice that there are pieces of this bullet journal that are gonna have washi tape over certain sections. That is just to protect my privacy. I try and be as uh, open with you guys as possible, but there are a few things that I just don't wanna share with the internet. And you know, you're gonna notice that throughout the book. So that's what the washi tape is for. But other than that, you know, it's a pretty standard year at a glance. I'm really enjoying this layout um, and it's working really well for me. So I'm really pleased with how um, useful it is. Now you'll notice that there are these kind of like sections, these months where I've got a, an asterisk and then an NDNT. That just means no drinking, no takeout. Those pertain to my goal of doing like a quarterly, no drinking, no takeout just month. And those are the months that I've kind of picked to do that certain goal. Obviously I did that in uh, February already. And then the next one for that will be May. But that is a nice little segue to flip into the goal page that I have. I've pretty much filled out the goal page um, as much as I can. I still need like one more 23rd goal to do for 20 before 2023. So I'm gonna think about that one because it's the last one. I feel like it should be kind of important, but aren't they all kind of important? So we'll see how that goes. But you guys can see also how my like goal obstacles and planning page is going. I basically just put the goal and what like number the goal is on the left hand side, the obstacles that are keeping me from obtaining the goal and the plan to complete the goal. Now, once I actually have completed these goals, I will mark them off in this page, like in this section. Uh, but I'm still working towards these goals. I haven't necessarily like completed, completed any of them right in this moment, in this space, but we'll check in with that in the next quarter and hopefully I'll have some of them done by then. And if not, we'll have to hail Mary it at the end of the year. But that is the 23 before 2023 page. I'm loving that goal page. You know, I love my lists. I like checking them twice. So that is really fulfilling my little Virgo moon. The next page that we're gonna kind of glance over is the brain dump page. You guys can see I've already filled that brain dump page to the brim. I love a brain dump. I haven't been using them as much this year. I have a bigger journal this year. I have more uh, space 
in my like weeklies to write notes and things. So we'll see how that goes. If I need another brain dump, I will include it later on. But you can see here, I planned our Discord with Monique, which we actually have up and running right now. So let me go ahead and plug that if you guys are interested. In all things Rumi's Digest, you can click the link down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of fun stuff in there, um, including our book club and just kind of a fun community where we talk about what we're reading and buddy read and do all kinds of fun stuff. Um, so if you guys want to stay up to date with us and what we're doing day to day, you can join our Discord down below. Flipping the page, you guys will see the arcs and new releases. This is significantly more filled out than when I made the spread at the beginning of the year. Um, basically, I've just got all my NetGalley arcs listed in here for like me to see when they're gonna be coming out and if I wanna promo them on our Instagram. I also have new releases that I'm excited for for this year, just because I wanna be able to know like when these books are coming out. But yeah, that's basically what this page is for and it is working splendidly. I'm loving it. The next page that um, is significantly more filled out as well is the book clubs and read-alongs page. You guys can see we've got fantasy series in there. We've got our Outlander read-along, movie night book club. I wanted to start a Throne of Glass kind of like read-along last month, but I didn't actually get to that book last month. It's just been a crazy first quarter. So I'm thinking that I might try and start that in May. I do know that there are a bunch of people who are doing like a Sarah J Mass along and kind of like a an Akatar read along and those guys I'll list down below if you want to like join into those because I'm not sure if I'm gonna get to it in May if we're gonna start it like ideally I would love to do that and finish it out by the end of the year but we'll see we'll just see how I'm feeling I'm doing like a little mood reading thing so we'll see how that goes um you can see I already also have like another book recommendation this is specifically from our discord wish on a moonbeam was telling me about a pirate romance called scandalous liaisons which I have bought I just haven't read it yet um but that of course is in the roomies discord and that's where I got that book rec from so I wanted to make sure that I put that into my book bullet journal so that when I read it I can you know make sure to reach out and let them know how I like the book. Flipping the page I'm very very pleased with how the book log is looking. I think at the end of the year once all the books that I've read in 2022 are filled out this page is just gonna look immaculate. I also really love the best of 2022 kind of like chart that I've got on the right hand side here. It's really making me think about what I'm reading every month and like what the best of the best is and I'm liking that I'm gonna have a full like comprehensive list at the end of the year. So now we're gonna get into to the monthly flip throughs, which, you know, they're all basically the same equation. I tried to do kind of like a, a theme, you know, going off of what I started with uh, for the yearly spread. I tried to kind of make that go into my monthly spreads, but if I'm being honest, I just use the same colors, put some leaves in there, um, and drew some really cute women, you know, and that's that's basically the theme of these months. So the beginning of the year was a little messy. I'm planning on having a more solid laid out theme system uh, for the rest of the year. So, you know, as you know, you clicked on this video, my theme for April is gonna be Bridgerton. It's gonna be more laid out like that. So I'll have a comprehensive theme for May and for June and hopefully for the rest of the months of the year. But these first three, you know, I'm just trying to move in and groove and I'm trying to figure out what I liked. So you guys can see I've got the title page here with my lovely little relaxation lady. She's just sleeping with her book super cute, um, but flipping into the January spread, one thing I noticed is I didn't use the notes and the goal focus section as much in this first spread. As we go through the months, you'll see it gets like more and more crowded because I, I, I was getting busier, I was doing a lot more things. Um, but in this first one, it's not as filled out. Um, you'll also notice the highlighted sections in my calendar. Those are for me, like once I get my checks from work, I like to highlight the day that I like worked that day. So I know that I've gotten that check and that is in the bank. And that's for me, a personal thing for me. Um, my TBR, I like putting it to the right of my monthly spread and filling it out like this. You'll notice that when I didn't read a book, um, in this first part, I put like an X, Later on, if I didn't read it, I would just move it to like the next month. I'd use the arrow. But yeah, you you guys will see how that 
works later on. I am not actually going to show you guys my trackers page um, for any of these months just because they're fully filled out with like my income, what I was eating that month, um, my goals and like what I completed. Uh, we already kind of touched on goals earlier, but as far as income and like my eating and like habits, I didn't really want to share that with you guys. Um, that's just a personal thing. I still love you guys. And yeah, that's just the explanation for why we're completely skipping over it. Flipping the page, we're going into the favorite lines and the wrap up. You'll notice I've got the same kind of spread for these first three months um, for this section and it gets like less and less filled out. Um, the wrap up is always solid. Like I'm always wrapping up the books that I read. So that one I always use. The favorite lines fluctuates depending on, you know, what I'm liking from that month. If it's got some really juicy stuff in it, whatever. Um, I I came up with this idea in January to do like the most interesting read and the most disappointing read from the month. I consistently don't fill out that part of this page and so I just completely like took it out for April. I was like I'm not using this. I should not be writing it in my journal and you'll see when we get into April kind of like how that falls into place but you know, for now, you're just gonna see some empty, empty spaces of where, what could have been. Now we're getting into the weeklies. I'm not gonna go like super deep into this. There's not a lot to really look at. I do like this weekly layout. It is nice, but I think it just left a lot of space uh, that wasn't used. So you'll see later on, I kind of combine and consolidate some things, but in these first couple, it wasn't really filled out that much. Flipping into February, I still try to do the line art with the like uh, women theme. Um, same color, same themes. You know, she's drinking uh, some wine from Stem Glass, which I think is funny because in February I was on a no drinking ban. So, did that work out? Flipping the page, um, you can see February is a little bit more filled out than last month. I've got a couple of notes, I've got a couple of important dates and things, but it's the same basic concept. Um, the only thing that changed from January to February is that in February, when I DNF something, I completely marked it out. So you can see that the Net Galley book, All That's Left in the World by Eric J. Brown, I completely marked that out because I DNF'd it. So I was like, get it off my TBR. I'm not reading it. I also liked to label the books and like kind of like what I was reading the book for in my TBR. So um, you'll see like the BR is like a buddy read, N is for Net Galley, B is for Book of the Month, F is for Fantasy Series, which is the Fantasy Series book club that I host with Rachel from Let Me in the Library, Jess from Books Past Bedtime, and Nicole Lee from Bonbon bon Reads. And then um, L is for the library, so like my library books. One thing that I did notice um, from TBR to TBR in this first quarter is that a lot of the fantasy books that I really, really wanted to get to, I have not been able to get to yet in this year. And it's really like crazy to kind of look and see, like I haven't read Master of Jinn, I haven't read Jasmine Throne. Um, I was like late on reading The Poppy War. Like I'm kind of like putting these fantasy books that I really want to read to the side. So I think that's something I'm gonna prioritize in this second quarter of the year is like really just reading the fantasy books that I wanna read and focusing on me. Cause like, I'm important. Anyway, so flipping the page, um, okay, again, I'm gonna be skipping the trackers and going straight into the favorite lines and the wrap up. It's the same situation. I didn't use the most interesting read or the most disappointing read. Um, which is crazy because like I feel like that would be such a good spread like if I actually took the time to fill those things out I feel like it would be really beneficial to like reflecting um, But I'm not a big reflector apparently you'll see like going into the weekly spreads I've got a couple more of those like washi tape kind of like blocker things It's just because I can't reveal you know, what projects I've been working on. And that's really like the truth of the matter. Everything else is pretty self-explanatory. I really liked the daily reminders of like drinking more water and like cutting down screen time. Cause I forget that kind of stuff. I'll just like get into something so hardcore that like I forget to drink water or like, you know, I'm staring at my phone or computer, iPad, whatever for a lot of the day. So I liked those daily reminders in this weekly spread. I also filled out the notes portion a lot more in this spread. I started doing this thing where when I would work for like whatever reason, if it was like a COVID test for work, if it was like a sponsored post for our bookstagram, or if it was like a fitting for work, I would 
put like these little squares in the notes section of my weekly. And basically when I would get that check from work, I would just mark out the uh, box. So I really like that because it can kind of like keep me up to date on like what checks are coming in, what I haven't gotten yet, what I need to check on, that kind of a thing. Flipping the page, this is probably the saddest part of this first quarter that I was so excited for this book club read of the Unbroken for Shelf Space and it ended up being a complete flop. I rated it a 2.5, I think maybe a two at the end of the day, I'm not even sure, but it's like I started the book and was like taking notes and then I realized I didn't need to be taking these notes on this book. I didn't need to be taking these notes on this book. So that was a little disappointing um, because I really wanted to like that book. I really wanted to have a lot to say and a lot to reflect on with that book. So going forward, I am going to be making some spreads for book clubs and like books that I wanna review. I didn't do that in this plan with me this month in this quarter, but I will be reflecting on that and showing you guys what I did with that this next quarter in July. So look out for that coming up. The first book that I'm going to be doing for that is going to be The Dragon Republic, which we're reading for fan a series. But you know, that's all in the future. Let's talk about the now. So anyway, this was pretty disappointing. You can see, you can see what it looks like. It was like head empty, no thoughts. It really wasn't that hard to understand. Um, and that's all I want to say about The Unbroken because I don't want to rag on it too much. I know some people really like that book, um, which is great if you like it super happy for you. Flipping the page, I've got another weekly here. It's a different kind of spread. I liked this spread a lot. As you can see, the days get filled up really easily. So I like to have a lot of space to write down notes, write down what I need to be doing, what I need to be doing for tomorrow, the next day, whatever. And this spread just really worked for me. Last but not least, we're going into March. You can see that the theme really, I, I don't know what happened here. I'm not sure. It's like, I don't understand what happened to the original plot of the movie. Anyway, but yeah, so she's just, I don't, I don't, is she an elf? I don't know. No idea. I just used the colors I had and tried to make up something and put self-love over everything. What? What? Anyway, I don't know what I was doing with that, but that was the theme for March. Flipping the page, this was a crazy, crazy, crazy month. So much happened, I feel like. Um, work was crazy, content was crazy. We finally got our Instagram together. It's looking great. Our YouTube is doing well, like crazy, crazy, craziness happened. So you can see that reflected in this um, March spread. This is definitely something that's satisfying to see because I like to see it all filled out. I like to see the highlights, you know, my lists love to see them filled out. Flipping the page, this is the saddest part of the month. Obviously there weren't that many favorite lines from last month, which is crazy to me because I read some really great books, you know, just didn't fill it out. So this was the main inspo. Like after this, I was like, all right, we got to redo this whole section because we can't be wasting paper like this. So that was the main inspo for kind of like updating the April quarter and like what we're going to be doing with favorite lines and wrap up, um, which we'll see in just a minute. Then you can also kind of see that my weeklies fell a little short. Like when I say March was really just kind of a free for all month, like I really just threw it up in the air and said, whatever happens, happens. And those cards will, you know, fall where they may. So the weekly, this weekly worked for me. I like having the boxes like this. I like having the notes on the side and I like having kind of like a glance for next week. So that worked. It just doesn't look that cute, but you know, <laughs> This is what bullet journals are for. It's to kind of just see what works for you. And, you know, it doesn't always have to be pretty and perfect. And that's the biggest thing that I've learned from kind of doing these bullet journal videos and having to explain to you guys, hey, it's not perfect but it works, so I'm okay with it. Anyway, flipping the page, you'll see another weekly. It looks exactly the same. I just didn't have the brain power to come up with literally anything. I didn't. March was so busy. You guys saw my, my monthly, like what even happened in March? So that brings me to my final, like I would say quarterly, reflection page. I really wanted to do one of these where I could just kind of reflect on the last three months and like what happened, what worked, what didn't work, you know, what I need to be taking with me into the next quarter, that kind of a thing. So I had no idea what I wanted that to look like and just went through a bunch of bullet journal videos, finally found Caitlin's Corner. Um, she had a really great 
kind of like decluttering mindset. And I thought that was perfect for this quarter because it's springtime. Like we need to be cleaning things out, you know, minim minimizing, minimalisting. I don't even know what that's a word, but um, I really liked this layout. And so I decided to do it for my like a quarter. So the declutter mindset is basically just like four different categories here. Um, the first is subscriptions to cancel. The one that I know that I might really, really want to cancel is epidemic sounds. That's just like something that I use for our vlogs but like do I use it enough to be paying what we pay for it I don't know you'll see kind of um in this spread I've got the things that I need to do and below it like what how I can complete what I need to do so for example for epidemic sounds I just have analyze the ES usage so like how much I actually use it compared to like how much we're paying. The next one is gonna be habits to recharge. Just like drinking more water, no takeout and exercise. At the end of this quarter, I kind of fell off of those things. I was doing really, really well. And then just kind of like, you know, when things get busy, you get lazy, you get tired. So I'm just gonna like recharge those habits by like tracking my daily water intake, treating myself like once a week to take out and just like having that in my brain that like I can do it once, but one and done, you know what I'm saying? like. That's all I can do. And then, you know, no work, no problem, set an alarm and work out early. I got really lazy with working out last quarter, last month in March. You know, once you fall off of a habit, you just gotta get back into it. So I'm getting back on my Chloe Ting and it's looking good so far. The next thing that I have is areas to declutter. This is kind of like my spring cleaning portion of the reflection. Uh, I just like have to declutter these areas. My parents are gonna be visiting in the beginning of April. So there are things that like I just have to do. And then last but not least, is just kind of like thoughts to let go of. You'll see I've got the washi tape on one of them because one is like a really personal one. And like I said, I love you guys, but like that's for me, not for, everybody so that one is washi taped out but the other one is that i'm not good enough this is kind of like work related um and not to get too deep but i'm getting a little nervous about my career because there's like a step up like i just took a big leap um in it and it's exciting but also nerve-wracking and i just need to be confident and believe in myself like i know i am because i'm a boss b so that is the like thought to like go of is that like i'm not good enough because I know that I am. Like, I know that. You know what I mean? So, like, let's let go of that negativity and just so weep it under the rug because I'm done with it. And that is the first quarter flip through. Okay, I know that was uh, kind of long, but the good news is we're getting into the next portion of this, which is the Bridgerton theme for April. Before we get started, I just wanna say I'm very, 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 very excited to share this with you guys because I was trying to find like Bridgerton bullet journal videos and I found a couple, but like this one, this one is really good. Okay, so I'm just going to um, go ahead and get into it. And like I said, if you guys don't want spoilers, I would say click off to the end of this video. We do have a couple of Bridgerton things from season two in this next portion. So, you've been warned. Okay, let's get started. Dear Rita, it is said that monthly bujo themes are often hard to come by, and while I find that to be partially true, this month's venture seems to be quite delightful indeed, with the Viscount's intent to wed and his budding romance with the Miss Kate Sharma on full display, it seems the Bridgertons are once again the talk of the tan. While you undoubtedly enjoy these pages, I will be answering one question and only one question indeed. What will next month's theme be? Sincerely, Lady Severin. Okay, so as you guys can probably guess, that was Monique doing the intro to the Bridgerton theme. Obviously, the inspiration for the first page is Lady Whistledown. We wanted to do something fun and creative and kind of give you guys a little intro to April. So, Miss Monique, the um, impersonations, you know, person of this house, she made this a really great uh, soundbite and put it in there. If I do say so myself, it turned out really, really well. Flipping the page in April, one of my goals for each quarter is to learn a new font. So you guys will see, I've got this kind of like Bridgerton-y, scripty, cursive font throughout this theme. I think it turned out really, really well. Um, I'm still 
you know, learning how to do it in different sizes um, because, you know, bigger is definitely different than smaller and that kind of a thing. But I think it turned out really, really well for this spread. You'll see the kind of like Bridgerton things in this first section are the scene with Kate and Anthony when they are out hunting together. It's kind of like this scene where they're like close, close for the first time ish. It is definitely one of my favorite scenes of the uh, season. And so of course I had to put it into this spread. Um, you'll see that there are a couple of different things happening, but it's basically the same monthly spread that I've been doing. I did add a things to watch because I am noticing there are so many things coming out and I just keep forgetting when those things are coming out. April is going to be a busy month, but I know for a fact Heartstopper is going to be on Netflix on the 22nd. So that was like the first thing that I wrote down. When we go through the quarterly flip through at the end of June, you guys will see kind of like how I filled this out, but it's basically kind of the same thing that I've been doing. Flipping the page, you guys will be able to see the trackers once again. Um, I did kind of do the same thing. I did the goals. I minimized the goals from like four goals to two goals. So that's what I'm going to be focusing on this month are two goals, which I will fill out later. Um, I've got the income tracker, which I really, really love. I did separate it into weeks. So I kind of know a weekly breakdown, but it will be the same kind of thing where I just kind of do the date what I worked on and how much money I'm making. Simple, easy, very useful. The next thing on this spread is the um, kind of like habit tracker slash like meal tracker. That's to get me back on track for my other goal, which is, you know, exercising more and eating right and just being generally more healthy. You'll see on this page that I've got the tulips and the bees as well as Miss Sharma's little Orgy Newton. You know, if you've seen the season, you know what all these things mean. And uh, you also know the bee scene, which has the quote, you know, I'm, I'm unharmed. It was just a bee. It was a bee. That was a fun time. That was a really fun scene. Um, and yeah, that's all I'm gonna say. But I will uh, let you guys know, obviously the tulips are from the show. That's like what he brings Miss Kate when she is sick. And we all know the B story by now, if you've seen the season. Flipping the page, this is kind of what I meant when I said consolidating the favorite lines in the wrap up. So I nixed the like most interesting, most disappointing reads, okay? I love the idea, but we're not using it. So nixed that and then just consolidated those two pages into one page on the left. And then on the right, I made up this uh, spread for like bookish dates and just like things that are gonna be happening. So I still need to fill out kind of like birthdays and things like that for like bookish creators um, because I will be keeping that in the space, but any kind of like sponsorship we do, any kind of event that we do, that will be going on this section. And I just think in totality, this spread came out really, really, really well. You'll see in the middle here, I've got the mallets from the, I think it's croquet, I think it's croquet. I've got the mallets from the croquet game that uh, Kate and, you know, Anthony played play together as well as the colors. And then I believe that this is the flower that Kate uses like in her soap. It's like her scent. And that's like one of the things that Anthony, he's like all about, you know what I mean? He's like, oh my God, a lily. I'd be smelling lilies. And I made them orange because even though Kate only wears orange once throughout the whole season, I think when she wears orange, if you guys remember, it's like, one of the best outfits. It looks so good on her. And so I just made the Lily that color as kind of like a nod to that scene where she wears orange and like that moment. Um, there you go. Anyway, and then of course I have the quote in here, beating you feels the same as any other wind, but somehow smells sweeter. Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Mm. I think that goes really, really well with our little mallets and it's a nice little mix of the quote and also things from the season. Turning the page, we're going to get to our first weekly spread. So I did a different kind of weekly style for this one because I did want to put in my favorite quote from the season as well as like a little like nod to one of the scenes from the season. I did bring back the daily focus, which is the drink more water. And the second one is a little bit different. It's be present. And that's just in daily conversation, you know, be more present, you know, put the phone down. So it could be kind of like cutting down screen time, but also just be there, you know, 
be there. You guys can see the weekly spreads are very, very simple. Like there's not a lot of lines, not a lot of craziness happening. I just kind of wanted to have it be a little bit open for uh, this weekly in particular. At the end of kind of like my days, I've got the next week slash brain dump section, which I'll just toss whatever in there. I'm trying to bring brain dump back. We'll see how it goes check in with me in uh, June. At the end of the weekly, I've got the quote and also the like nod to the, I think it's like a pond scene or like a river. I don't think it's a river. I think, I think it's literally a pond where Anthony is helping Kate out of the boat. That is like such a Darcy and Elizabeth moment. Uh, like when Darcy is helping Elizabeth Bennet get to the carriage, like that's what it reminded me of. And a lot of this season reminded me of Darcy and Elizabeth just because it's like a hate to love romance kind of thing, uh, which I live for and I was thriving on this season. But but yeah, anyway, this quote is in the later half of the season. It's one of my favorite quotes. It says, it's because I have never met anyone like you. It's maddening how much you consume my very being. My family is on the brink of ruin and yet still I all I find myself thinking about all I find myself able to breathe for is you and that's very reminiscent of like when Darcy and Elizabeth are out there in the pouring rain and Darcy's like I don't even like your family like they're embarrassing but I love you like that's what that scene kind of like reminded me of and I don't know if that is what they meant to do I don't know if that's in the books I actually haven't read the Bridgerton books but that quote mm epitome of chef's kiss. Anyway, I was living, thriving, loving it. So that is my first weekly. I don't know if I'm going to continue the weeklies like this. We'll see how it goes. But I think this one is going to be very functional. It'll be really great to use. So that is that. Um, flipping the page, you guys, you guys will see this sticky note that just says the Dragon Republic. And like, I don't know if you can see the kind of like pencil outline that I've got. I'm gonna be doing a Dragon Republic, you know, fan series book club spread. I've got a couple of ideas for that and how I want it to look. So we'll see how that goes. You guys will just have to tune in at the end of June to see like how it actually happened. But I have high hopes for this. I think it's gonna turn out really, really well. And I wanted to do a really good job putting it together. So I didn't wanna rush it. So I did not include it in this plan with me, but I think it's gonna be really, really, really good. Ha, ah, I can't wait to read that book. Anyway, I still think about the Poppy War, like I just finished it a week ago for like the second time. And I'd be thinking about that book a lot. A lot. Anyway, so that is the Bridgerton theme that I've got going on. I'll continue it for the rest of April for like my other weeklies and you know, any other spreads, maybe like a brain dump or something if I include that, but that is it guys, that is it. And yes, I feel talked out. I feel like I talked a lot. Uh, hopefully all of that made sense. And you guys like this spread as much as I did. I'm super excited to use it and fill it all out. That's that's all I got. So if you guys like this video, give it a like for me. Comment down below if you guys do bullet journaling and what your theme was for this month. I find that it's kind of hard to think of themes and try and be like original. Uh, so, you know, if you've got a theme that I can copy and like make my own, please let me know uh, down below. But yeah, if you guys want to support me and Monique on this channel, make sure you are subscribed and click the notification bell if you don't want to miss another video from us. And like I said, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I had a lot of fun making it. I think the quarterly videos are just like really hitting for me. It is nice to see the spreads like fully, you know, completed and filled out and like what's working and what's not working. So I like this. We're having like a little reflection time and like, you know, a moving forward time. So anyway, all right, I'm going to stop talking, but hope you guys enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.